Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, electricity and electric stuff is so cool and frankly so crazy vital to our world. Because if we don't solve this problem, then yeah, we, we've got a problem. Hey, today we're gonna talk about a topic called this. Electric force. Force, force, force. We've been talking about forces since like day one. F equals M, A, all these forces, centripetal force. There's an electrical force too. Makes sense, because you know you can do stuff with electricity, right? You can turn a motor on and it does stuff, right? So we know this idea and, well, let's talk about electric force, gravitational force we've talked about too. Electric force. Now let's actually make a comparison between electric force and gravitational force. If you recall, gravity is the attraction of any two objects for each other. Notice I said the attraction of any two objects for each other. Electric force is different because it can either be attractive or what? That's right. Because if you have a positive doohickey and a negative doohickey, they're going to attract. And if you have a positive thing and a positive thing, they're going to repel. Likewise, if you have a negative thing and a negative thing, they're going to repel. Positive things don't like positive things. Negative things don't like negative but positive and negatives. You've heard the term. Opposites attract. Where did that come from? Electric forces. So how strong is this force? Guess what? It's actually a similar equation. If you recall, let's do gravity just for fun here. The force of gravity is equal to the big G times M1 times M2 over R squared where G is the gravitational constant, M1 and M2 are the mass of the two objects, and R is the distance between them squared. Remember this equation? Guess what? The electrical force is almost the same ball game. It's equal to K, the electrical force constant, times, now I'm going to introduce a new term, Q1 times Q2 over R squared. First, let's talk about K. K is a little K, by the way. It is, I always get this number on, 8.99, for all intents it's 9, I guess, times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. It's a big fancy, fancy term. Now we've got these Qs. Q1 is the charge of the first object, of, you know, object 1. And, of course, Q2 is the charge of object 2. What do you think R is? R is the distance between them. Just like with gravity, the closer you are, and it's usually done in meters, by the way. So the closer you are, the stronger it is. Think about that for a moment, right? Um, if the, this is the force of, of ele electric force. Uh, is R gets small, right? It's on the bottom of the equation, F gets big. And so the force is stronger the closer you are. Obviously, the, also, it's stronger the higher the charge is on top, because the Q's are on the top. K is a constant, so it doesn't change anything. So if I double the charge, I double the, the electric force. If I double the distance, it will cut it in a quarter, because quarter, it's R squared. So, you know, 2 squared is 4, 1 over 4 is 1 fourth. It's going to decrease it by, say, a factor of 4. Now, that's kind of the equation. We'll do some stuff with the equation. But there's also ways that we denote this. How do we write these out like graphically, pictorially. So let's say I've got a positive force right here, call that Q1, and we'll do another one. Positive force, and that's Q2. What we do is we draw arrows away. Now why am I drawing the, this is the force vectors, why do they draw these force vectors away? Because these are repulsive, because it's positive and positive. Remember that comes back to opposites attract and uh, likes repel, right? So that seems obvious. And if I've got Q1, and let's say Q1 are the same, this is positive, and I've got, I'll put Q2 here a little bit, and this is negative, Q2, what you're going to have is two forces that are attractive and you draw them together as arrows. They're always directly close. Now, 
we aren't going to get into this too much, but they are vectors. And so vectors can add if they're at different angles. And if we have a third charge, we're not going to get uh, too crazy about those, but we'll get the idea. So it's very simple to draw these structures. How is it? This is how you sketch them. Probably a relatively simple example, but let's do this example. We've got uh, find the electric force between two one coulomb charges separated by one meter. So I've got a charge. This is one coulomb. And another charge, it doesn't say if it's positive or negative, let's just assume it is, and this is one coulomb, and the distance between them is one meter. It's a question right here, right? Well, the electric force is K, Q1, Q2, over R squared. So that's gonna equal to K. Now, if you recall what K is, that's 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. I'm gonna not use the units just to simplify it. Times one, <laughs> times one coulomb, divided by one squared, I can do the math with a calculator, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Now we haven't actually talked about what's the unit on force because it's force. Forces are by definition in Newtons. So that my friends is how you do a super crazy simple electric uh, uh, force problem. Houston, what's on the problem? We're gonna see you in class.